All right, it's been maybe, I don't know, four hours since I send you back this, and you can see there's some changes. It's starting to actually dry quite a bit. Now, I wait until you know it sets up, and it's not just really tacky to the touch before I do the cocooning. Gauze. It's not normally the gauze I use. This is not the dollar store stuff that I really like. But it's gauze from a pharmacy. It should work. Three inch gauze. Just You can reuse it. Reuse them. Reuse them. They, they last a long time. But I'm going to start at one end. And a couple reasons why I like to wait. First of all, when you're spinning the cocoon around this, the gauze, you don't want the sinew to get slipped sideways. And also, to maintain even, maintain even pressure, look at that. I can roll it on my leg and it's not going to get all goofy. And so I just, well, it, it's almost a metaphysical thing. Let's talk. Whoa. Is that you, you're putting energy into the thing. And it seems like every time you, you fuss with it or you do something to it, you're, you're adding some, some energy to it. I know that's kind of hippy skippy, but hey, we work at Bose. Get it started, and look at it. It's set up enough so it's not going to get all squirrely when I wrap it around my legs. And the reason why I spin the bow is I'm able to, and I can grip it, you know, once I get the gauze around there, and maintain even pressure. And I'm not putting any side force on that sinew. And I can wrap it pretty tightly. Not as tightly as I will tomorrow when it's really dry. I'll really give it a go. The big thing is maintain uniform pressure around so you're not getting any side forces on that sinew. I suppose on a straight D bow you don't need to wrap it, but I've got inside corners on this sign. The handles and at the tips and the reflexed reflex handle. And so as the sinew tightens, dries going to want to pull up and this supports that in lieu of any wraps, sinew wraps. And I'm just going to, I don't have the sinew going over and around the tip so I'm going to pay particular attention to like get it nice and tight there so it doesn't want to like scoot towards the center. I also do this on raw hide back bows. I use hide glue the raw hide back. Nice tight pressure. I can get a little tighter, I think, on the second go around. It doesn't matter that I got two layers on one portion and one layer on the other. Just let it breathe so it can dry overnight. Again, I can carefully roll this stuff up and use it on many bows. And it generally doesn't stick to the hide glue. Again, this stuff is designed not to stick to wounds. There we go. I just did it and slipped it underneath it. And that's it. Kind of squish those fibers down that are trying to roll up and form little barrels keep them nice and flat I'll even take a glass sometime and kind of roll it over and I like this because it's going to be a nice smooth smooth finish and I could paint it in intricate ways if I wanted sometimes you can hear it like popping being pushed down when you wrap it. That's a good sign. You're just sticking everything down there. Maybe it doesn't dry as fast. So it's like from Apocalypse Now. He's a wise man. He's a smart man. You know. <laughs> Going from Christopher Walken to uh, Dennis Hopper. He's a poet warrior man. 
Apocalypse Now is one of the greatest movies ever made. The horror. Anyway, that's it. I'll unwrap it tomorrow morning and be in awe of the metamorphosis. It's almost like a moth bowl, a butterfly bowl, going into its little chrysalis or cocoon, coming out a dried bowl. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Now it's time to finally sleep. Early, early morning. Inventory day. John signing off.